Thank you very much, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know that there are many of you who are still uh, eating, and please continue to do that. And if you have to get up to go and get some more dessert, please do that as well. Just a show of hands, how many were in the chamber yesterday afternoon for the delivery of the budget? Okay, those, those can curl up and go to sleep. And uh, <laughs> because, of course, most of my comments are going to be about the budget. Thank you very much, uh, John, and to the chamber for, uh, for having uh, me here this, this uh, early in the, in the whole post-budget uh, responses. I think we have 12 or 13 or maybe even 14 that are on the agenda, so it's going to be a busy month. And uh, with an Easter break, of course, it even makes it busier. This is an easy one because we're close. We have here we're in the chamber. It's the, it's the one that I have to go to the North Battlefield Chamber of Commerce and be there for 8 a.m. Uh, on a particular day. That's that's going to be an early 5:30 start. So uh, those are the those are the hazards of uh, of being uh, the finance minister. No, I think uh, yesterday most of you, of course, have uh, seen the response by by the media, by officials, and uh, you know I think uh, we're I as a finance minister am very pleased uh, because we're in a unique situation, we're in a unique position in all of Canada. I had a reaction yesterday from uh, CBC uh, when the gentleman who was interviewing me from Toronto, and uh, he said. I haven't, I haven't interviewed a finance minister with the surplus for a long, long time. And that's, uh, and that's something that Saskatchewan can, uh, people, I think, can be very proud of. The fact that uh, Saskatchewan is a bit unique in that respect. We have a balanced budget. We have a balanced budget on both the general revenue fund side as well as the summary financial statements. And I know that's boring talk, but it's, it's important to mention that because since 2004, under the former government, the Financial Administration Act was changed, and what it did uh, indicate that uh, up until that moment, we were only doing the GRF, the General Revenue Fund. And in 2004, that was changed, where now we produce the summary financial statements. And we do that. They're in, the, they're in the book. You can see that, and you will note that on the summary financial basis, and by the way, that's everything. Now, sometimes you might hear from the opposition that we should only be doing summary. You know what, across the, uh, all of the provinces, summaries are all different. There are summaries uh, of provinces that do not include the health board. There are summaries that do not include the universities, post-secondary. So everybody's a bit different in respect to the summary. But we also do the general revenue fund for a reason. Because that's, your, that's your, your, your revenue and your expenditure. That's your checking account. And we want people to be able to understand what happens in the checking account. What is the Minister of Agricultural spending, uh, Minister of Agriculture spending on property fruit? You'll find that in the General Revenue Fund. You can check that out on a moment's notice. But on the other side, people of Saskatchewan need to know the entire financial picture. What is, what's happening over in Crown Oil? What's going on with, with Crown? What's going on in WCB? What's going on in the health region? What's going on in the school board? They need to know that, and that's why we produced the summary financial statements, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to do that. You know, I was pretty pleased yesterday to be able to make another comment about, about the, uh, the position of Saskatchewan, not only you know, unique, unique in that respect, but also unique in the respect that, you, that uh, two days ago, we had new, new uh, numbers on our population. 1,089,807 of us now call Saskatchewan home. The largest number ever. And I think that's pretty significant when you look at the fact that, you know, we've grown. We've grown significantly in the last four years, over 80,000 people. That means that there will be things, and people were joking about my little finance, uh, you know, pre-budget pre clip, which was all about new shoes. I can't even tell you how many times I was asked about my new shoes yesterday. But I, I, I ended up, for the first time in three budgets, going to Yorkton to a uh, clothing store there called King W. Answer. They've been around for decades. And they're growing, and they're growing extensively now. Why? Because we have 82,000 people more in the province of Saskatchewan than we, had, than we had a few years ago. And that's also very exciting. One of the goals that the Premier uh, uh, set in the uh, growth plan, he said that by 2020, we want to have 1.2 million people in the province of Saskatchewan. But you think back, think back 10 years ago. To make that statement 10 years ago, it would have been unimaginable. People would have probably scoffed at that and said, what are you, what are you talking about? Saskatchewan can't grow. And now we're right on track. We're right on track with meeting the, uh, the increase that we see needed for, for labor, 
we're going to be able to meet that track uh, that uh, uh, projection uh, because we're growing, and we still have a lot of lot to do, of course. Uh, quick comment about some numbers. You'd be you would be disappointed if I didn't tell you some numbers. Uh, as I indicated yesterday, on the general revenue fund side, we will have a surplus, and that surplus will be 64.8 million dollars. And on the summary financial side, we will have a surplus, and that surplus will be 149.8 million dollars as well. <coughs> Everyone knows that we have something called the rainy day fund, or it's also known by this technical term, it's called the growth and financial security fund. By the conclusion of the of this of the fiscal year 13-14, that fund will have 695.1 million dollars. That's the projection. Now we made some choices about what we're going to do with that fund. We've sort of subdivided it within itself, and we've created something, as the name would suggest, we created something called the security component. Uh, we had a lot of discussion with, with our, my, uh, my colleagues at, uh, at uh, the legislature, and we, de we determined that for security purposes, we need to set aside at least $500 million. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, a component of that is going to be called the security fund, and it will contain $512.7 million. At least that's the projection. That's going to be there in case there are events that this government has no control over. Price of a barrel of oil falls to seventy dollars for some, some reason. Some world catastrophe occurs, and, and we need to uh, we need to meet the challenge. So we're, we need to have that security component, and we're going to set that aside. If we don't use it, that fund won't continue to get topped up. It will remain at that five hundred, or in this case, five hundred twelve million dollars. The other component is going to be called our growth component. And that's where we need to keep setting aside dollars. As you know, our uh, uh, Act says that at the end of a fiscal year, the surplus is determined. Half of the surplus must be transferred to the Growth and Financial Security Fund, and half is to, to pay down the debt. So we're going to then, if the uh, security side has not been affected, we're going to transfer all of that money into that growth component. So we're going to have this year $182 million in that, in that growth fund. That fund will continue to grow. If you, if you look at the budget documents, you'll see over the next three years that it grows substantially uh, when you look at the total component uh, within the growth and within the security uh, uh, side. Reason for that, we have made a promise. We're going to continue to pay down debt. We're going we're to ensure that by the course of the next four years, $400 million of debt, additional debt is going to be paid off. Now that's that's not a huge number. 400 million isn't a huge number, but it's very significant. When you look at the fact that the government, gen, the general government debt of the province when we took office was 6.8 billion dollars. Today, after paying down considerable debt of over 3 billion dollars, it sits at 3.8 billion dollars. Overall, for the last uh, number of years, we're looking now at an interest cost savings of 600 million dollars. That's pretty significant. That's why we've been able to build schools, been able to build roads, we've been able to lower taxes, been able to meet the challenges of, of, a, of a growing province. And as, as announced, uh, John indicated already, we made some choices in this budget. We had to make sure that we were dealing with, uh, with uh, certain areas and certain priorities. One of them is with people with disabilities. We want to make sure that we continue to meet those challenges. And that's why in the Saskatchewan Assured Income for Disability Program, another increase. We're increasing that by another $50 a month and for individuals and $60 a month for couples. Paratransit buses, absolutely, we're doubling the capital funding for that program. And we're going to increase transit operating funding for people with disabilities by 10%. One of the key areas that we announced yesterday that was met with a lot of, uh, uh, I think, uh, enthusiasm and that's in the area of, uh, of dealing with shelters. You know, uh, the amount of, uh, unfortunately, the amount of violence against women in Saskatchewan is, uh, is horrible. And we're, we hope that there will be a time when that, when that will be uh, not needed. But until, we have to, until that happens, we have to make sure that we have safe havens. So as a result of that, we're increasing the operating to all women's shelters in Saskatchewan, especially here in Regina and Prince Albert, who have expanded the number of, of uh, beds, the number of rooms that they have available. But most importantly, it's been a long time since a transition house was built, 1989 in Swift Current. 
So unfortunately, that's that's a stat that we're not we're not proud of. But as the uh, as the uh, partnership with the Saskatchewan Housing Corporation, the federal government, and the local community in Melbourne, we're uh, we're announcing a 1.3 million dollar construction of a of a new transition house in Melbourne. I know it's going to, I'll never get through all of the material from a budget. Uh, those of you who were there yesterday know that it took me 55 minutes or just about an hour and uh, I'll never get through that. So I'm going to just try to touch on some of the highlights. Uh, one of the areas that we're, we're trying to uh, meet the, the challenge is in the area of affordable housing. We have allocated $6 million for 1,300 new rentals under the Rental Construction Incentive. We've added another $1.2 million to the Affordable Home Ownership Program for the development of another 240 homeowners, home ownership suites. We've added $1 million for the uh, support of 70 secondary suites. And we were talking about the secondary suites at our table. We've also added, by doubling the money for our program that has worked really well across, that pro across the province, and that's the Habitat for Humanity Program. One million dollars has been doubled, now it's two million dollars, and we expect that we're going to be able to build 40 new homes uh, through Habitat for Humanity. Infrastructure is a key in this province. We know that there's a tremendous challenge uh, to, to move forward. We've spent considerable money in the infrastructure in our term, but we know there needs to be more. And as a result of that, our budget announced yesterday is $847.5 million in infrastructure. That's, uh, that's $59.8 million more than last year, and it meets some of those challenges. It, it means that we're going to be able to invest in more schools and healthcare facilities and hospitals. Uh, Moose Jaw, of course, they received $50 million as the next component of the monies they need to keep building that hospital. So uh, we're very pleased with that number, and that's people say, well, what, what more could you have done if you would have had more money? Well, the infrastructure is a, is a huge, uh, uh, there's a huge demand for it. I'm going to just mention a little bit about highways. Uh, you know, we're, we're considerably worried about where the highways might go. We've seen in the past that we've had a washout of number one, we've had a washout of number 16 when, uh, you know, six or eight inches of rainfall. I hope that this snow melt isn't going to affect uh, that kind of a, of a situation and create that kind of a disaster for us. But we're, going, we're on our target. We promised that we would, over the term of government, uh, allocate $2.2 billion to highways and transportation infrastructure, and we're on track. We're allocating $168 million to repave 280 kilometers, $142 million for preventative maintenance on provincial highways and bridges. Uh, component I'll just spend a little bit more time on, $63 million for economic corridor. What does that mean? Well, that means we're going to be able to finish the Estevan bypass. We're going to be able to work on the Regina West bypass. We're going to be able to complete the passing lanes on Highway Number 10 between Valgoni and Fort Cabell. We're going to be able to finish 20 Highway 11. That's what the economic, economic corridor money does. We are allocating another $49 million for bridges and culverts, and which means $14 million for the new St. Louis Bridge near Prince Albert. $49 million for winter maintenance, as well as safety maintenance activities such as mowing and drainage and marking, a pavement marking and illumination. Tremendous amount of dollars needed in highways and uh, as you would talk to the, the Heavy Construction Association, they know that they, they uh, can do more and there is, a, of course, always a, a demand for, for highway bill. Education, the area of schools. With our announcement this year uh, of two new schools, we've, uh, we've uh, put two new schools forward. They are in Gravelberg and Langenberg. That takes us to, uh, four, I think it's 43 projects since we became government. Uh, with the spend since 2007 on not only these major projects, but also the, the many repairs, the roof replacements and the boiler replacements, uh, where we have spent over $600 million on school capital. And uh, as I think, uh, former board chair, I heard her say uh, a, a few years ago, saying that uh, the uh, Arcola schools, the first announcement in 10 years, I think that's accurate. So we're, we're very pleased to, uh, to be able to move forward with P3s as well, because we have to look at something. We have to look at the bill. <laughs> I'm going to quickly just deviate a little bit from my notes. How many births in the province of Saskatchewan in two, 2012? Anybody know? Answer 15,035. 
previous year, just over 14 and a half. Now picture this. In our school systems across the province, grade three, grade four, grade six, grade seven, doesn't matter, about 11,500 on average. 15,000 births last year. You think we're gonna have some pressures on building new schools in about four or five years? You betcha. So we've gotta look at that. We've gotta be looking at that, and, and of course it's Regina, it's Saskatoon, it's Warman, it's Martinsville, it's White City, it's Balgonia. These are, these are communities that are gonna need more schools. They're gonna need new schools. And if we use the old formula, we'll never catch up. So we've got to, we've got to become innovative. And we're looking at bundling. It's a thing called bundling through P3s. Calgary and Edmonton, they've done it. They've built 10 similar schools in Calgary. The interesting thing I found out about that was the cost of that school is about $4 million less than just building one at a time. That's pretty significant at all when you bundle. So we've got to look at that. We're going to be open. We're going to be open to all of the initiatives that we can look at to ensure that we meet that infrastructure challenge. That's why we created SAS Builds. SAS Builds is going to uh, be, uh, uh, we actually set aside some GRF money to SAS Builds. It's about $6 million. And we want SAS Builds to look at three things. There are many things that can look at, but first out of the gate, three things. Regina, east bypass. If we're moving forward with the west, what are we going to do with the east side of Regina? And all we had to see was that, um, um, last Friday when I was trying to do my editorial boards, and I couldn't even get down to Victoria because there was truck after truck after truck with super bees. You couldn't move. So we're going to have to look at Virginia East Bypass and see what are we going to do. We also have to look at the uh, project that's already underway. We put some money into it last year, and that's the Saskatchewan Hospital in North Valley. Uh, if you ever have to go there to visit somebody, not a great place. It's over 100 plus years old, and it looks like it. And we have to be able to meet that challenge. So we're going we're to look at it through a P3 model. And as I said, we're going to look at uh, the viability of bundling schools and making sure that we meet the challenge across, uh, across the schedule. A couple of comments about municipal funding. You've heard a lot about that in the news uh, through SUMA conventions and SARM conventions. This, uh, you know, we, we have a formula in place now that I think is very good for municipalities. It's a, it's a predictable, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, formula that uh, they will know, in fact, next year what they're going to get as soon as they see the public accounts documents in about June, and that is the PST. PST determines the revenue sharing pool because one full point of, their, of the PST of the five point percentage points of PST is dedicated to revenue sharing. That's up 11%, by the way. That's because of a growing population, and $264 million has been allocated to the revenue sharing pool. That's up $27 million from the year before. One of the areas we have to address is labor force, and making sure that our students uh, are able to, uh, to receive the, not only the education, but then receive the skills and training that they need. So we've added $20 million, or about 20%, to direct student support. And that's everything. That's everything from the graduate retention program to the student aid fund to the Saskatchewan Advantage Scholarship. These are all programs that are really, really successful. The graduate retention program, you know that's anybody who gets a job in Saskatchewan is eligible to get back $20,000 uh, over the course of, of a term uh, of their tuition costs. We had to add millions of dollars to that this year. Now we are spending $60,000 $3.9 million in the graduate retention program. It's working, and it's working, and that's what you're seeing as far as uh, people you know, staying in Saskatchewan. Uh, one of the other areas, we increased a lot of labor marketed initiatives, 300 additional apprenticeship training seats. Industry-driven skills training. The Immigrant Settlement Support Program. We know that that's very important. Over $9 million now. Uh, on the Immigrant Settlement Support Program. That tells you what, what, what needs we have. The adult basic education, uh, an increase of 1.5 million there. We're also looking at the provincial training, apprenticeship training allowances, the First Nations and Maiden Skills Training Programs like Northern Career Quest. In fact, the program over at the Saskatchewan Institute of Indian Technologies, new program requiring $150,000, it's called the Aircraft Maintenance Engineer Training Program at SIIT, and I know they're going to do a great job in that. In the area of post-secondary capital, 
We've spent uh, significant dollars there, and the dollars continue to flow to the Academic Health Sciences Building in, in, uh, in Saskatoon. Uh, there are new dollars. Uh, the next phase of money is needed in labor for the Southeast Regional College that's under construction, so there's four million more going there. And we announced yesterday that the Parkland Regional College, which is looking at about a 15, 16 million dollar project, we announced a million dollars yesterday to get into the design stage. Interesting, I met yesterday with the, uh, the board. They have raised at the local level, they've raised over eight million dollars. And that's going to be a fantastic addition to meeting the challenge of, of, uh, of uh, more graduates in the skills training. Their projection is over 360 graduates as soon as that place is up fully operational. And a lot will be done. One of the exciting things I think in Regina, and we had some reaction yesterday from, from University uh, of the University of Regina and students, uh, is the fact that we're allocating $10 million through the Saskatchewan Housing Corporation to the U of R for a brand new student residence on campus, and they're going to be moving that forward. We continue with huge amounts of funding needed for the fact that we're now at 100 medical training seats, medical doctor seats. We're at 120 residences across the provinces, residencies for, for those doctors when they, when they leave the, the actual college. And we're also uh, having to spend an additional $2 million to meet the growth of the registered nurse training program. We're now at 690 seats, which is where we want it to be, and we're at that full complement, but it requires additional dollars. We also have something underway now called the Joint Task Force on Improving Education and Employment Outcomes a project jointly uh, worked on by the FSIN and the government. The report is going to be out soon. It's going to have recommendations as to how we can deal with that, with that workforce. By the way, a workforce that I see such huge potential, we have that advantage. We have a growing uh, uh, and young Aboriginal workforce that has not been fully utilized, and I think this will do it. So we've, got, we've uh, allocated $3 million in new funding to ensure that those recommendations can be, can be worked on. Overall, for uh, First Nations and maybe people from all ministries. Uh, we have this year's budget provides $184.8 million, which is $10.8 million more than last year, or 6.2%. Uh, the companies across uh, Canada, of course, bond rating agencies and others, were very fortunate that the, uh, the economists are predicting that Saskatchewan is going to again have a great year in 2013 with a 2.6% real GDP. And in 2014, GDP is projected to be 3.1%. Final comment I'll make on healthcare, which, and that's, there's still tons of stuff to say. Healthcare, $4.8 billion. 4.8 of our, of our 11.6, sorry, 11.5 on the expenditure side is, is healthcare. That's 42%. That's a, that's a percentage that has been going down. Overall, healthcare spending, when you, when you take a look at the, at the fact that 4.8 billion is 3.5% higher than last year, that's remarkable. Because when, you look, when we look back at, in fact, our first year in government with Minister Danforth, uh, we were looking at 7, 7.5, 7 8% growth in healthcare. Just not sustainable. And we've been able to move things uh, uh, yeah, more efficiently. We've been able to apply things like lean, but we're able to apply projects like Premier uh, Wall and Premier Kiss worked on, which is the, uh, the, the uh, six generic drugs. And now we're going to see that saving that utilized by the province of Saskatchewan is going to translate into $10 million worth of savings uh, for the province of Saskatchewan. I'm going to remember, uh, mention one other thing. We know that in the area of Alzheimer's, there's a program called the First Link Services. And they used to have uh, a total funding of $50,000. We've increased that fund by $350,000 to $400,000. That's a seven-fold increase, and it's going to mean that some significant uh, assistance can be done to those suffering from, from Alzheimer's. I mentioned uh, capital already. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on capital. We're, we're spending significant amounts on new schools. As I mentioned, the $50 million for, uh, for uh, Mushja Hospital and the next phase of over $80 million for the LTCs that are underway. Some are being constructed, some are still in the design stage, and some are already finished, like Watkers. But the next tranche of money needed is, is over, over $80 million. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm going to stop there. As I, as I indicated, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor being the finance minister of a province. 
the fact that we have so many entrepreneurs like you who have created jobs, who have meant that this province is moving forward. We're the place to be. And I'll tell you, I had a meeting with the financial institutions last night. Many of the uh, visitors were from Eastern Canada, Toronto, and, and, and others. And uh, they, they cannot believe what is going on in Saskatchewan right now. And uh, I'm so proud of what work you guys do. What, what, I'm proud of the people of the province of Saskatchewan because it's time to move this province forward and we're going to continue to do that. So thank you. I, uh, I know there'll be a few minutes for questions, I think, John. Yeah. First question, I think you've pretty much answered, but just in case you have anything else to add to this, uh, what practice uh, or measures is the government, uh, proactive measures of it, is the government taking to ease the health care budget burden? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, as I already mentioned, the, the uh, you know, $10 million in the growth plan, but you know, even the design of the Moustrow Hospital, it was done through a, through a lean initiative. The Children's Hospital that's being planned in Saskatoon is being done through a lean initiative. And they've got, you know, they've got models and they're looking at making it the most efficient as possible. We don't want health workers wasting steps walking in, uh, you know, uh, without, without the need to be able to, to walk. It, it can be designed better. Those are things that we're going to continue to look at. The employees within the health care system have been remarkable and say, you know what, government, you should be doing this. Don't do it this way because you're wasting money. And that's what we're interested in looking at. Can you provide a few comments on tax cuts versus deficits? Well, the fiscal responsibility that I think our government has shown is that we don't want to go back into the, the, the time when expenditures exceed revenues. And that's the toughest to do. You know, people have asked me, well, th this budget, you know, is this or is that? And I said, do you think it was a tough budget? And the answer is, of course it was. There are so many priorities. They're so easy to get into a spend mode. Uh, there, were, there, were, there were tough decisions to make. And one of them was regarding the corporate income tax. We know that we've uh, we've stated that we're going to we're going to reduce the corporate income tax to be more competitive from 12 down to 10. But when we looked at the whole picture of revenue and expenditures, we said can't do it this year. We're not going to do it until it's sustainable, until we can do it within a balanced budget. And for this year, that decision was postponed. One of the other choices that we did make, though, when we changed the uh, collection of education property tax uh, back a few years ago, we made that uh, new formula, we put that new formula into place for, for uh, agriculture and, and residential properties, the same mill rates across all of Saskatchewan. Well, we created three tiers for the corporate side, for the commercial side. And we said that's, that's temporary. And this year we made that change. We uh, no longer have three tiers. We have eliminated the three tiers down to one and we've reduced those mill rates. Now, yes, this is reassessment year. There will still be some commercial properties that will pay more EBT. If, you're, if your assessment has gone from you know, one level that's quite low to something that's very, very high, you will pay some more education property tax, but there will be many that will pay less. Thank you for that, by the way. Appreciate <laughs> that. We've talked about that. We've talked about that. The <laughs> Saskatchewan <laughs> Chamber has lobbied on this one, and the Regina Chamber as well. So. Uh, Two questions left. Uh, Minister, what is your favorite part of the new budget? Well, I think uh, that one's probably pretty easy. We've, we've, met the, uh, we've met priorities in four key areas, and I'm going to state that. If you, look at, if you look at the budget book for health, advanced education, social services, and education, those four ministries, and you take a look at the fact that our we increased the revenue or the expenditure by 3.1 percent. Do you know how much of that 3.1 was used by those four ministries? 3.0. 3.3% 3 of the 3.1 was spent on those four areas. Those we identified by listening to the people of Saskatchewan. Those were the key areas: health. And we have to make sure that we address the concerns of uh, those uh, with disabilities or vulnerable people. And we have to make sure that we met the challenge in advanced education as well as education. And that's where the spend has, has, has gone. The, end, the other side, of course, is I'm also very pleased with the fact that we were able to make those tough decisions and stay within a balanced budget. That's critical. Uh, yep, I think we may be the only one. BC is counting the fact that they're balanced. Uh, I, I questioned their numbers a little bit, but that's I'm not going to be a B company as a province. <laughs> <laughs> Minister, I, 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 
hesitate to ask you this question because the media is in the room, but it's a question. <clears throat> will the Toronto Maple Leafs make the playoffs this year and or win the Cup? They will make the playoffs for sure. I don't think we're quite a Cup contender yet. There's a couple of things we have to do. I have some suggestions uh, for the manager. And, uh, no, uh, I've always been a Leafs fan, and uh, I want to know Charlie uh, Bulldog. Is he? Charlie is a great Leafs fan too, uh, as, uh, as well. And yesterday, when I was speaking to uh, the group uh, for the John was part of, one of the first things he gave me was a Toronto Maple Leafs tie. So uh, someday I'm going to be wearing that one in the legislative. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Thanks. <laughs>